International Blue is an album where I thought it'd be good to go back to some parts of the past, not copy something that's already happened, but rather take the characteristics of what was good then and combine that with now. It's the first time we're all ever together in real life. So that is... Uh, you just don't do anything that's easy, do you? We've all met, but not <coughs> been all together the, in one room. I until today. No, I never met him. <coughs> no. No. The wonders of internet. You know, everybody's three clicks away. And that is what happened with us. And either via a social platform or network, or directly via email and I started um, uh, bluffing my way via Facebook chat. It started off with uh, Liam who was the furthest away of all because he especially came over for tonight from Australia. Uh, would you yes. believe <laughs> there was uh, another voice which I would like to write for and that was Neil and that was four clicks? Four clicks? Yeah. 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 <laughs> It was a bluffer's conduct, yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I, I fit the profile. When you're a musician, you get a, or especially when you've had a past, you get asked to do a lot of stuff, yeah. especially over social media, and, you know, without wanting to sound cruel or conceited, a lot of it is tripe, you know? It, it is, isn't it? Tell them like it is. Well, it is, but yeah. with Stephen, I mean, immediately when I heard the stuff, it was... Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, there was no bluffing involved in the, yeah. in the quality of what he did. So the morale of this bluffing story is that you can only bluff so far. The rest has to, you know, be... At some point you've got to stand up and be truthful. <laughs> Tell you what I get for nothing. What? Guitars. you When you're a struggling musician, you're hoping that somebody, one of the equipment manufacturers, will give you something for free and they never do. And the moment you become successful and can afford to buy them, they give you loads yeah, of stuff. So in, yeah. it's a bit, that's a bit of a bluff, isn't it? Mm. Going, oh, I really like that guitar. And they go, yeah, here, have one. They have to take it, you know. Mm. You yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's a, it's a Neil thing. I went to a, um, I went to the opera. Um, and I'd never been to the opera before and uh, I only felt out of place because of the, the after the after event party really. I didn't I'd gone on my own stupidly and uh, I didn't really know anyone and I just felt and in you know, after a while you think, Well, I don't care, I'm just gonna relax. I'm just gonna stand here, you know, and the minute you relax, things start to happen. You are I do it all the time actually. Yeah. All the time. But the last time, the, the yeah. very last time was I was walking down Regent Street. Uh, on my way to buy a shirt from German Street and uh, J. Crew was just opening. It was their opening day. And I thought, oh, that's interesting, I'll go in there. So I walked in and the guy says, have you got a pass? I said, no, I've just went out for a cigarette. I'm just coming back in. And he went, oh, okay, and let me in. And I drank champagne, had smoked salmon and toast and cheese <laughs> and, uh, and breakfast, got a free goodie bag, got a shirt and walked out and went and gone and bought my own shirt. <laughs> Nothing at all. Good. Done it all my life. <laughs> the secret is just to just totally believe that you should be there. I mean, ob mm. it's an obvious thing to say, but mm. just believe that you should be there. My biggest bluff was being signed to a small American label in Silver Spring, Maryland, and flying out with an entire band um, being picked up. And we'd got rid of the lead singer the week before he wrote all the songs. <laughs> That was, uh, That's good. That was our biggest bluff, That's and we good. sort of got away with it for a while. We had to go meet Tina Turner in a house in the Hollywood Hills, and we were three young guys. I think I was 22, from Sheffield, and um, and and we walked into her house and with Roger Davis, who was a manager at the time, and he was, you know, it was all very like, oh hi, what have you got? And we were like, <clears throat> hiya. <laughs> <laughs> And we just managed, and luckily, we just bluffed, we just kind of bluffed our way through it and told her what we were going to do, what we wanted to do, and she and we managed to get Tina Turner to fly to London and record with us, which oh, is man, unbelievable. Where are you going to follow that, eh? Yeah, that's a difficult <laughs> My one. My biggest bluff tonight was walking down those stairs looking confident, but I was going arse over a tit. <laughs> I'm a very clumsy man, and it was a big ask. I've been, I've been having yeah. nightmares about that. I produced the Band Aid record, Do They Know It's Christmas, and that in itself was a bluff because you had to give the impression that you were absolutely in control of all of these mega stars, <laughs> these incredibly talented musicians. 
but there had yeah. to be someone who was kind of spearheading it and I had to kind of bluff my way through that.